In this screencast, we're going to talk about the three types of friction problems you might encounter in, uh, in a statics course. Um, the first one looks like this. Find the force of friction acting on the box if I push on it with a 10-pound force. The way that most students uh, originally go around this is they say, well, friction is equal to mu static times the normal force. Um, here, the normal force is equal and opposite of the 100 pounds. And mu static is given as 0.02. 0.2. So the friction force is equal to 20 pounds. Now if we draw a free body diagram of the box, we immediately see our air. We have um, our force of 10 pounds pushing uh, on the, the box to the right, and we have our friction force that we calculated of 20 pounds pushing to the left. If we do the sum of the forces in the x direction, we have a net force of 10 pounds to the left, uh, which suggests that this box is going to start accelerating uh, over to the left, uh, even though I'm pushing on it to the right. So that's obviously not right. We've obviously done something wrong. And so let's let's look into where, where we went awry. Well, friction isn't actually equal to mu static times the normal force. Friction is less than or equal to mu static times the normal force. If I were to plot the uh, pushing force on the box versus friction force, well originally if I start off with a little tiny force, friction is just going to balance out my little tiny force. Uh, this is going to grow linearly uh, up until the point of impending motion. After things start moving, then we switch to the kinetic coefficient of friction and the friction drops off and becomes steady uh, for any given pushing force. But in static equilibrium, we're looking at uh, this region over here. So if I push on this box with a 10 pound force, this is less than, we decided that the maximum friction was 20 pounds. Uh, the maximum friction is 20 pounds. So if I push any less than that, well, then the friction force is just going to be equal to the pushing force in this scenario. Um, so if I wrote my sum of the forces, in the x direction, I get 10 pounds minus my friction force is equal to zero, or friction is equal to 10 pounds. And that's my answer. This brings me to the first type of friction problem you'll encounter, and that is static equilibrium. If, the, if we determine that the box is uh, in static equilibrium, then we need to use the equilibrium equations, and then we need to check that the friction force is less than mu times n. So here we have uh, 10 pounds is less than uh, or equal to 0 0.2 times the normal force. So sure, this box is in static equilibrium and is not moving. The next type of problem we're going to encounter is an impending motion problem. Impending motion, if you remember, was the point in our graph when we reached the maximum friction and then we dropped off to kinetic friction. So this is uh, the maximum force that we can apply before motion occurs. So at that point is when motion is going to be occurring. Um, here it says find the minimum force required to pull the blue box. This is an impending motion problem. And this is actually um, a little bit tricky because the blue box is, has this green box sitting on top of it, which is connected to the wall um, that holds it in place. Um, so at uh, when we looked at our graph, at this point we said that friction is equal to mu static times the normal force. So this is the case when we can use mu static times the normal force. Let's see how this plays out when we do the static equilibrium of the box. Let's draw a free body diagram of the blue box. We have our pulling force acting on the box. We have our uh, normal force of the, the top box and also the friction force of the top box. And we have the, um, the normal force of the bottom box and the friction force of the bottom box. If we write our equilibrium equations out for the, the bottom box, we see we have two equations with five unknowns. We have the friction on the top, the friction on the bottom, the normal on the bottom, the normal on the top, and our pulling force. 
The normal on the top can come from the top box. If we look from the top box, we have 100 pounds acting down, and then we have our normal force of the top box um, acting back up, um, and that's going to be equal to 100 pounds. That's just some of the forces in the y direction for that top box. And this force is equal and opposite to this force. So that gives us gives us one unknown uh, using an equation from the top box. But we're still left with two unknowns. Well, those come from with this knowing that this is an impending motion problem. We can write um, we can write friction for the top box is equal to mu static for the top box um, times the normal of the top box and friction for the bottom box is equal to mu static at the bottom uh, times the normal at the bottom. So now we have um, two equations, four equations with four unknowns, and we can we can start plugging in and solving this guy. Um, if we if we plug this in, then we get that the, the friction on the top is equal to the normal top is 100 pounds times 0.15. That's 15 pounds. The friction on the bottom is 150 times 0 0.05 is 7.5 pounds. And so the total pulling force is going to be the sum of these two. Uh, and we get that the pulling force is equal to 22.5 pounds. To summarize, if we have impending motion at all surfaces, so the blue box has impending motion for all surfaces. We can use the equilibrium equations plus use the maximum friction everywhere. Now uh, we have friction is equal to mu times n. And so that's going to be the second type of friction problem you might see is an impending motion problem. This next problem looks a lot like the, the previous one, but it's an entirely different type of problem. Here we have uh, the same two boxes stacked on top of each other with the same coefficients of friction. And now I've moved the pulling force up to the top box and I've removed the rope that attaches it to the wall. I say find the maximum force before motion occurs. This uh, type of problem is a different type of problem because we could have multiple scenarios happening. We could have the green box could just slide off and to the right um, off of the blue box while the blue box stays put, or the blue box could slide with the green box to the right. And so we'll need to um, attack this problem in a little bit of a different way. So here are the, the problem solving steps for this third type of problem. This is impending motion at some surfaces. Uh, we can still use equilibrium equations uh, and we can assume sliding at one point. So this is important that we only pick uh, one spot to uh, or one thing, one object that slides. And then we need to check to make sure, this is really important, that mu is less, or the friction is less than mu times the normal force everywhere else. So let's start um, with the first scenario that I said. Let's assume that the green box slides off the blue box while the blue box stays put. Let's draw a free body diagram here of the green box. We have the green box, the pulling force on it, P, and then we have uh, the force of friction. We'll call this. Uh, the force of friction of uh, on the bottom of the green box, and we also have uh, the normal force on the bottom of the green box, and then we have the weight, 100 pounds, which is pointed downward. So here's the free body diagram, and if if we assume that this is the box that slides, then then that means that our assumption is that that the friction on the bottom of the green box is equal to mu times the normal force on the bottom of the green box. In this case, that's going to be 0.15 times 100 pounds or 15 pounds. And so that means if we look at the sum of the forces in the x direction, we have P minus Fg is equal to zero. The, the force here is going to be 15 pounds. So before we can box this in as our final answer, we need to check. We need to make sure that uh, our assumption was correct. And so to do that, we'll draw a box of, we'll draw the, the blue box here, which is 50 pounds. Um, we still have the 
the force of friction from the green box, uh, it's equal and opposite to, this force is equal and opposite of this force, and we have the normal force of the green box uh, acting downward. And then we have the forces acting on the bottom of the box. We have the normal force on the blue box, um, and we have the force of friction on the blue box. So again, we can write our equilibrium equations. Here we have um, some of the forces in the x direction. We have the normal, the uh, friction of the green box minus the friction of the blue box is equal to zero. And so the friction on the bottom of the blue box is equal to uh, the friction on the of the green box, which is 15 pounds. And this, we decided has to be, we need to check, this has to be less than or equal to our, our mu times n, which in this case is 150 pounds times 0 0.05 or 7.5 pounds. Well, we can see that that's not true, that um, this is not less than or equal to 15 pounds. And so our assumption that the green box slides off the blue box was wrong. And we need to uh, re redo the problem making the assumption that the boxes slide together. So if we want to rework the whole problem, um, assuming that sliding occurs now at the bottom, we have our two boxes. Um, we could draw our, our pulling force on this guy. And so here we have the top box, uh, the green box. We have our pulling force to the left, and we have our, our friction force to the right, which we don't know what that is yet, um, and our, our normal force of the green box. And then for the blue box, we have um, our friction force acting on the top, our friction force acting at the bottom, our normal force acting on the bottom, our normal force acting on the top, and the boxes each have their own their own weight attached to this. So here now we're assuming that that sliding is occurring at this surface. And so here we say that the force here is equal to um, mu times the normal force. In this case, that's 150 pounds. So that's going to be equal to uh, 0.05 times 150 pounds is 7.5 pounds. If we look at the sum of the forces in the x, then we see that the force, the, the friction force at the interface between the two boxes is also 7.5 pounds, which means Again, do the sum of the forces in the x for this top box, the pulling force is equal to 7.5 pounds. And we can verify, we've already checked this, um, but we can verify now that um, the 7.5 pounds is less than or equal to mu static times the normal force uh, for the green box, um, which is 15 pounds. Seven point five pounds is less than fifteen pounds, and so that's what's going to happen. the The boxes are going to stick together, and they're going uh, to slide off of the screen um, together in tandem, something like that. Um, so, just in summary, we'll we'll see three types of problems in this class. The first type of problem is a static equilibrium problem. The second type of problem, and for static equilibrium. We just use the equilibrium equations. We don't use the friction equation at all. We just need to check that we have less than or equal to mu times n. The second type is an impending motion problem where we have sliding occurring at all surfaces. And here we do use the equilibrium equations in combination with the friction equation. And then we have um, a problem where we can have um, type 3 problem is when we have impending motion occurring at some surfaces. And here we have to assume where the sliding occurs and then check to make sure that we have um, 
less than the friction is less than mu times n everywhere else. If it's greater than mu times n, then we need to rework the problem and change our assumption. Thanks for watching.